adaptability reserve graph, better known as the HRV rainbow graph. This graph is the most important scan view when interpreting the neuropulse. It is designed on an XY axis with balance being plotted on the horizontal X axis and activity on the Y axis. The vertical center line represents the ideal operational balance between the activity in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Sympathetic dominance plots to the left of the center line. Parasympathetic dominance plots to the right of the center line. The horizontal line midway through the graph represents an average calculated threshold for activity within the autonomic nervous system. A plot below this line indicates a lower than desired level of activity, indicating a lowered adaptive response. The combination of the vertical and horizontal thresholds provides four quadrants or zones one to four, which have unique functional characteristics. A fifth green zone represents the characteristics of a well-adjusted patient exhibiting above average AAI and ABI. This zone was derived from analyzing significant amounts of data collected on a well-adjusted cohort of chiropractic patients. This zone can be viewed as representing a reasonable and preferred amount of adaptive reserve. Some points about the rainbow graph. AAI is calculated from the amount of amplitude that is within the frequencies associated with the sympathetics and parasympathetics. ABI represents the balance between the sympathetic low frequency and the parasympathetic high frequency activity. The patient's plot, which is a white dot, will score within one of the five zones, with the green zone being the most desirable as it represents a well-adjusted state. The higher the plot in the green zone, the better. This data and the calculations are available in the table view, accessed by swiping left after reviewing the rainbow graph. The yellow, orange, and red regions provide a visual perspective so that the patient can recognize where they are in relation to the green zone. Yellow can be described as being category one stress, orange category two, and red category three stress. Zones 1 to 4 represent unique interpretations of the HRV data, which are published in the scan and core score reports. Let's take a look at the highlights of each zone. Zone 1 is the upper left quadrant. The patient is highly sympathetic and also has high amounts of adaptive reserve. We sometimes refer to this zone as the crossfitters plot. Because there is a high reserve, the dominant sympathetic activity represents a diminished state of recovery. Rather than focusing on the drivers of the sympathetic fight-flight activity, this quadrant should be viewed as indicating lower than desired parasympathetic responsiveness. The parasympathetics are able to modulate the constant S activity so that the patient constantly remains in an S dominant state. Crossfitters typically overtrain, yet are healthy and strive to remain wellness oriented. Their positive lifestyle choices keep the activity of the autonomics at a desirable level for the time being. One of the goals in managing zone one patients is to reduce the excessive activity while regaining the parasympathetic control. A plot in zone two is not as frequently seen as zone one or zone three plots. In this quadrant, the parasympathetic dominant state should actually re be regarded as a sympathetic insufficiency response. These patients classically have low adrenal function, which suppress the release of sympathetic neurotransmitters. They have drifted to where they are sluggish and unresponsive to the demands needed to live a functionally active life. They constantly feel exhausted and are needing to have the autonomics rebalanced to regain their vital responsiveness. Zone three is where the majority of patients will be plotting as they enter into chiropractic care. Classically, they are sympathetic dominant with low autonomic reserve. The further down and lower left they plot, the more incapable they are in managing their daily stress. Those who remain in lower zone three typically transition to zone four, which is a very unhealthy state. Zone three patients being sympathetic dominant have a lowered immune responsiveness and a higher inflammatory response, making them vulnerable to the next level of stress that they need to respond to. Typically, the persistence of vertebral subluxation drives people towards zone four. Zone four has the most dire outlook for the patient. 
they have low parasympathetic responsiveness, and they have very little reserve. We don't see many of these patients in a chiropractic setting because they typically are being managed with a more intensive medical approach. They have very little adaptive reserve to respond to the demands of any stress, making them extremely vulnerable to environmental and pathogenic stressors. The green zone, or zone 5, is considered the ideal target for remaining in a well-adjusted state. It is very attainable to get and stay in the green zone for those under chiropractic care. The higher a person plots in the green zone, the greater responsiveness they have for managing distress and taking on more eustress. It's sometimes convenient to name each of the four quadrants. Zone 1 can be referred to as the wound up or uptight quadrant. Zone 2 could be described as being exhausted. Zone 3 as being distressed. And finally, zone 4 as being weakened. As well, Many people use a car analogy to relate the same four quadrants. Zone 1 is like sitting at a stop sign and revving your engine, while Zone 2 is like trying to drive with your parking brake on, and Zone 3 is like trying to drive with an empty tank and the brakes that are starting to fail. Zone 4 is like akin to trying to drive with the brakes that have seized. These everyday connections help to tell your patients the story of what they are measuring.